Hey people, welcome to or welcome back to Iridian Games, a channel dedicated, in a very broad sense, to tabletop games. Mostly war games and RPGs. And it's been about three weeks since launch, it being December 9th, 2019, so we're still kind of honing it in. But, getting past all that, got another train building tutorial for you. So, wire trees. Specifically, the look we're going for in this video is ancient gnarled oak trees in autumn, but you can make them whatever season you want. When it comes to crafting, you know, you only have a limited amount of time to build stuff, assuming that you have, you know, responsibilities, jobs, commitments, relationships, things like that. So we all have to make determinations on how we want to spend our time and what we want to make. For me, Trees really make or break a layout, so I definitely put a lot of time into them. So these trees are made out of wire, and there are a couple of complicated processes that, well, quite frankly, are pretty time-consuming, but I think they're well worth it, and some of the techniques will probably be helpful for you if you're going to be making wire trees or any type of trees in the future. Also, one of my favorite things about these trees is uh, you can stand these little guys on them. So if you want to have a character climbing in a tree, perfect for it. Let's go. Okay, apologies for all the jabbering. I suppose I just like the sound of my own voice while well, I'm on YouTube. So I'm going to be presenting two different methods for making wire trees. They have some similarities, but we're going to start with the most standard, oak option one. And the thing you're going to need is 22 gauge copper wire, and I also use 20 gauge wire as well. You can use other gauges, but I just find that uh, 22 gauge is the sweet spot. And this, I think, you can also use whatever wire you have lying around. That's some crappy dollar store wire, maybe. Do you begin, of course, by unspooling it? Now, I want this to be 12, these pieces to be 12 inches, so I attempt, with marginal success, to wrap it around a ruler. And you can see, right off the bat, I experience some, uh, some difficulties. And then you can just take it off the ruler and snip all the ends off. And then you'll have a bunch of little pieces of copper wire. You'll need a lot, so. I've noticed that you can make a pretty decent sized tree with like one spool of wire, depending on the spool. Once all your wires are unspooled and cut, you can just start putting into bundles. These bundles will comprise branches. So I'm putting about five to six, sometimes even seven pieces of wire into each bundle, then taking the last piece of wire and just wrapping it around the bundle so that they all stay in place and don't go all over my really dirty cutting mat. So I just keep bundling them up. And when I get to about five to six or seven, bundles of wires I'm going to turn that into a tree so get them all together I'm taking some needle nose pliers and just twisting the roots together so that all the wires are twisted into one if that makes sense and then I get some pliers for some more twisting power and twist the main trunk together so all those bundles of wires are getting twisted together and I keep twisting and twisting and twisting until it gets so twisted that it becomes like gnarled and strange shaped, I think is the word for it. And then once we have our strange fantastical trunk shape, it's actually not that fantastical, fantastical. I'm looking at reference photos right now that this is actually pretty realistic. I start by separating out the main branches that protrude from the trunk. And once they're separated, I just twist the wires together so that it remains separated. And I just keep separating it into different large branches. And I do highly recommend, you know, having a reference photo. It really helps you make decisions. 
or at least it does to me. Then once I have my branches kind of figured out, I start separating individual wires from the wire bundles and I loop them back on themselves. So they're coming out of the bundle, then looping around back in. Then I take some pliers so they're held down to the branch and I start twisting it until it forms its own little branch and ends in a loop. Then I cut the loop, creating another little wire. And then I fold that wire back in on itself and create another little eyelet loophole thing. And then I cut that. And it progresses like that until you get a bunch of branches. Man, I am glad I can do this over video because I just cannot figure out how to explain this in a more elegant way. So, yeah, just take your wire, loop it back in on itself, clamp it in place with some pliers, or if you have really strong grip strength, your fingers, cut the loop, and then fold the remaining pieces back in on itself, or on themselves, clamp them in place with pliers, twist them into smaller loops, and cut those loops, and then you should have the beginnings of a branch structure. Okay. And then it is a multi-hour process to get the tree made. So I, I think this is why some people don't like making wire trees, or they just get the woodland scenics, pre-made trees, or whatever. Crafting is very personal to each, well, person. And I think that it's kind of a meditation for me. And that's why I put up with the time investment. Each tree probably takes around five hours of work. If you want to have more wires or more branches, it's really easy just to wrap more wires around the branch or the trunk structure and twist them into your own branches. Then once everything's twisted up, I come in with some hot glue for two reasons. First, it gives the tree a little more body and width, and it also fills in a lot of the gaps in the structure because it's wire twisted together. Wire is cylindrical in nature, so it doesn't come together seamlessly, so you're going to have a ton of little grooves. This fills in a lot of them, but you don't want to put hot glue on the most extreme branches because it'll be way too thick to look realistic. Then, once the hot glue's in place, you're going to have a lot of strands. The best way to get rid of them, I believe, is just blowing them with a heat, a hair dryer. So once that's done, we'll look at oak option two. Same process, getting some wire bundles, twisting them all up, and taking some aluminum foil, folding it out into a long strip. I use two of these strips because I want my tree to be thicker. And then I kind of twist it into a trunk shape that's interesting to me. And hopefully to you. So once that's twisted into a shape that you like, just take one of the bundles of wire, twist it around the aluminum foil trunk, and continue the aluminum foil trunk with the wire and once the hot glue's on it, it should create uh, one continuous structure. Then if you have any excess from the wire hanging in a different direction, you can twist that up into other branches as well. Once the wire's in place, I cement everything in there with some hot glue so it doesn't move around and the wires don't fall off. And then it is just a matter of Twisting out the branches just like we did in Oak Option 1. Then when all, when all your branches are in place, or even before that, I cover the entire aluminum foil trunk with hot glue. So it will basically turn the bendable, malleable aluminum foil shape into one that, well, is made of hot glue. So it will probably stay in place really well, and it does. And then once that's done, you've got your trees. Now, I was looking at some reference photos and 
a lot of these ancient oaks that I'm making have a bunch of dendrite like little clusters of brambles. So I'm taking some Scotch Bright Industrial Scour Pad, which is like a poor man's rubberized horsehair, as I've said before previously, and just tearing off with my fingers a bunch of little chunks. And each chunk is like a small cluster of branches. And then I take some gel super glue and start attaching them to the tree. Gel super glue is important here because unlike regular super glue, it has body. So the little fibrous material that is the industrial scour pad will kind of sink into the gel super glue and dry in place. So the super glue will go up and around all the fibers and it will have a much better bond than regular super glue. And I just keep working these little scour pad clusters into place. Okay, so to further fix these scour pads into place to cover and to cover up any of the wire grooves or any exposed aluminum foil I'm taking some latex rubber mold making material and just giving it a coat of all this latex so I'm using Woodland Scenics stuff it's more expensive than some other brands that you can get just because I have it on hand uh, if I had a choice, I'd be using cheaper latex, but uh, yeah, just give it a coat and you may need to brush some latex off because it can create bubbles, especially in the scour pad, like little latex bubbles will form in between these little branches and you don't want it to dry like that. So give the whole thing a coat in latex and it'd be good to go. Latex, it's, this is not, this is not completely necessary. You don't have to do this, but it really does help the next step. It helps this wall filler that we're gonna be using to adhere to the tree better than it would adhere on hot glue. So we're gonna be making some horrendous texture paste. Well, what is that? Great question, I'm gonna tell you. It's ground pine bark or sawdust wall filler or spackle if you live in the US and I'm using Elmer's glue in uh, one part and then three parts water mixture. This allows the spackle to become workable and still adhere to all the little pieces of pine bark. Now I got these little pieces of pine bark by um, just cutting up some pine bark and putting it in a coffee grinder, pulsing that up I basically get like a sawdust consistency. You don't need this, you could just use sawdust, but I add it to the spackle mixture and then just begin painting that on to the trunk. So you want your consistency to basically be workable, not gloopy and falling off. So just put it on there all over the branches, all over the little dendrite areas and I'd recommend after putting it on, stippling it so it gives a, a texture. And then if parts of the horrendous texture paste gloop up on you know, some of the branches, just twist them off with your hand so that you don't have large little globs of wall filler at the end of a spindly little branch. Uh-uh, not what we're looking for. Okay, then once that's done, I get some watered down Mod Podge, mix it with black paint, throw it on there. Again, credit to this going to Black Magic Craft for introducing us to the Mod Podge black paint mixture, which was far superior to the old method of just using PVA glue and black paint. So this will secure all the pine bark, everything in place, and it will become super rock solid, which is awesome for wargaming. Now, I'm gonna be doing a super rushed paint job on this guy, and it's just going to be comprised of a base coat of mid-brown and I'm only doing one coat that's pretty watered down I'm not worried about reaching a full opacity because there's gonna be a lot of moss on these trees so get that base coat down and then I come in with an overbrush which is like a really heavy dry brush essentially I've talked about it in other episodes and I just hit all the raised areas with a light gray with a little bit of brown and that will serve as the only highlights I'm gonna go for and there you have it you can leave it like this if you just want a dead tree but let's add some spice to it. So for the moss, I'm just mixing some fine flock, which is uh, gonna be Woodland Scenic's green grass with some Mod Podge and just painting it on. 
Alternatively, you could paint some Mod Podge on the tree. I'd recommend watering it down and then just sprinkling the flock on top of that. But I want this to clump up, so I'm just painting it on. And then I'm going to add some fall foliage in the form of coarse turf. And I made, this is a homemade flock. So I made this out of carpet pads and acrylic paint. And I will eventually do a video on it because you can do a lot with making your own coarse turf. And I think everyone should give it a shot. Oh yeah, and uh, one quick thing. I think the best method for attaching flock to trees is actually not using spray glue, because it can frost. Modge Podge. Just put them on the branches, dick the bra uh, <laughs> dip the branches into a tub of your flock, and take those branches out. Best way to secure them, least risk of frosting. Let's go. Okay, and then when that's done, just seal it with a spray mixture of one part Mod Podge to about six parts water with some flow improver. And I put that in a spray bottle and just hit the tree with it a couple times. So for basing, do whatever you want, base however you want. But I'm using these uh, little artist plaques that I got from Walmart. They're meant to be painted for craft projects and stuff. And I do some alterations by just sanding down the edges, giving them a bevel, taking a coping saw to make an irregular shape in one particular oval piece so that, you know, it's not completely symmetrical, which I don't think looks very good. And then once that's in place and the base is done, I throw down some epoxy glue and fix the tree in. I recommend a two-part epoxy glues for uh, putting these trees on any sort of base. And that, people, is all the processes that I use to make these trees. And they can go in any number of environments that you want. And guys can stand on top of them, which I think is great. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Coming in next Friday is, no, this Friday, damn. This Friday is going to be a Nordic house speed build. All right, like, share, and subscribe, but only if you want to. Thanks so much for watching.